obviously vicious with people, absolutely vicious with people, snarling at them and using language around women that even a DC pimp would hesitate mouthing. Yes, he drinks himself into a mumbling stupor. One of the current uh, SS White House detail personnel, Secret Service White House per- detail personnel, told a sister who told a communicant of mine that Bush goes to Crawford as often as he can to get plastered. Actually, he was never on the wagon at all, and neither is he a born-again Christian. His alleged victory over the bottle and his miraculous discovery of Jesus in the tool shed are car roll refabrications designed to enhance the image of a bitter, destructive, alcoholic, and aging closet queen with delusions of grandeur and reference. And so that's a, a typical description of Bush. If you look at my website, thewatcherfiles.com, many pictures of Bush and all the scrapes and bumps and bruises all over his face over the last couple of years, apparently getting plastered and falling down all the time. He had never quit drinking. You know, they go on and on about how he has dry drunk syndrome. He doesn't have dry drunk syndrome. He has drunk syndrome. <laughs> uh, but apparently no longer a problem because he's not really there. The Bush we're seeing is a clone. They claim Bush was taken on a train. I haven't given, been given much more details, but they claim that he was taken on a train ride. Uh, so they're not talking as much yet about his death as much as Cheney's. Uh, the reptilian stating that Cheney's eyes were gouged out, they were burned out, and then they beheaded him, and then they played with his head uh, for a while after he was dead. Uh, and so this is what awaits these people, folks. Uh, you know, they, they buy into these lies to get into these secret societies and, cl- and climb to the tops of the ranks that they're going to share Lucifer's power and wealth in hell. Or, you know, they're going to reign in hell. Uh, but somewhere along the line, they learn the truth for themselves because... These beings are scared to death to die. And we've seen Cheney over the almost the entire presidency just always underground and underground bases, afraid to come out. Uh, Bush Jr. being the same way, having clones all over the country, traveling all the time. You never really could tell where George Bush was. Uh, because last summer, the D- George Bush traveling everywhere, signing bills in different states, it wasn't him. You know, and I said back then it was a clone. Uh, because the real Bush probably home at Crawford getting plastered, you know. Uh, it's all been a charade. The President of the United States does not hold the ultimate power. He is the puppet for the string masters behind him. And so if you want to look at the people with the power uh, in the country, look at the people behind the President, uh, because almost always the President that is elected is just a yes man uh, and to sign bills that they put through and, and do what he's told to do. Uh, I think George Bush Jr. just started really getting into this uh, self-affirmation stuff where he was starting to get this Hitler complex, uh, this I'm God complex, where he can do anything he wants. He's the president. You know, I would hear that over and over and over again uh, in, in regards to him. I can do what I want. I'm the president. What I say goes. You know, had no regard for the law. Had no regard for the Constitution or a majority consent or a majority opinion or even what law is, it's all based on just what he thinks, because he can, thinks he can do whatever he wants. He's the president. So it's going to get interesting, folks. Uh, I don't know how long they can pull off this charade in Washington, D.C., with having cloned officials there. Uh, Bush and Cheney both being cloned. And I don't know what the problem is uh, with the skin blotches. I've you noticed them on people for years. If you look at the right cheeks, uh, and especially people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, where it looks like their skin just covers, barely stretches their bodies. They have all these bulges in their skins, and all these weird defined marks and and things. Uh, You have to wonder, you know, what's under the skin? Is it really a reptilian, or is a reptilian just an entity that hosts the soul of a human being? Because... Sometimes you got to wonder, I mean, especially looking at George Bush's face lately. Uh, look at their cheekbones. Uh, the thing that struck me about George Bush was his hands. They were showing his hands. And you could see at the base of his fingers on the insides of his palms these huge puffy blotches. It was very strange looking. Uh, just, just these huge puffy blotches on his palms of his hand right underneath the base of all of his fingers. Uh, and then also, 
uh, you know, check out their cheekbones, you know, the sides of their faces. Usually the right side of the face is more detailed and telling. Uh, one place to always look. I remember posting a picture of Michael Moore on my website. And on the right side of his face, he was uh, probably had a 10 o'clock shadow or whatever he is. He hadn't shaven that day. Look at the face of a demon right in the, right in the middle of his cheek. And I posted that at my site, The Watcher Files. All of these, all these people. Clinton's the same way. Uh, one of the reasons uh, some people believe that all the orgone in the air that we have out there. I mean, we've been plastering this country with orgone for two, three, two years now. Here it is. It's all over the place. And uh, it's, the whole thing with the chemtrails was to make an atmosphere conducive to the aliens so that they could stand to be here. And so what some people believe is that, uh, one of my scientist friends, is that all of the, the orgone that's in the air is disrupting their entire chemtrail program uh, to where they, they, they can't make the perfect change to full humans now. And, and that's why we're seeing in their faces telltale signs that that's not really a human look at them. And it's like a demon with, or alien with skin stretched over his body and... You know, these noticeable bulges and, and just noticeable marks. Uh, and that's being a, an, an interaction or an, or a, uh, interaction with these with this orgone. Uh, knocking out a lot of their plans. So I have to laugh, you know. <laughs> we started this orgone two years ago just knowing that, that it was positive energy. Uh, and that positive always attacks... Uh, and negative energy can't stand to be around positive. And so it was, a, it was an invisible war going on behind the scenes. Still going on. You know, we're still saying this stuff across the country. I don't talk about it a whole lot. I just let the Lord lead people and stand them up and put this stuff out. And it's just been a silent battle behind the scenes going on. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because definitely... Uh, not going things, uh, things aren't going the way they've always planned them to. Or as smoothly, smoothly as I thought they would. <coughs> uh, another thing of interest. I have more information lately on the Church of Northcom. I love the name, Church of Northcom. I've given the Elf God a new name because the elf god is this elf standing for extreme low frequency and i've been talking about it for years about how they they have this extreme low frequency microwave waves that they use uh, not only to torment people with to attack them with uh to where you'll, you'll feel dizzy and you'll get headaches and migraines and actually feel like you're on drugs or drunk and you have to get away from the computer get away from your house and then you feel fine uh, because they could use these, these microwave weapons of theirs, these high-tech weapons, to attack you through your computer monitor. So I put orgone all over mine. Uh, but they also use it for voice-to-skull technology and for mind control tactics. And so I've been warning people that it's so much about how to hear the Lord, how He speaks to your heart, how He's a still, small voice that speaks to your heart, that He doesn't speak to your head, because our government has been using this elf technology uh, to be used as voice to skull technology where they speak to people's heads and they play God. People actually believe they're hearing from God. And, and so that's why it's so important to realize and learn that the Lord does not speak to your head. He speaks to your heart. Uh, but another one of these things that's come up alongside that is that we know a lot of these high-tech weapons are coming straight from Northcom 